Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk to you about a new newer bait called a Tokyo rig. Now this is kind of sweeping the nation right now. Mike Iconelli has kind of been the one that is credited with bringing this from Japan to the United States. So stay tuned. We'll talk all about a Tokyo rig, how to use it, where to use it, and what the baits look like under the water. All right, so the basics of what a Tokyo rig is, it's a split ring with some kind of a hook, usually an offset hook, a barrel swivel that that ties to your line, and then a down wire. Now this down wire can be anywhere from two to maybe five, six inches. And the actual name of this in Japan is called a punch shot. So it's kind of like a drop shot, except you've got this metal piece, and they use it for punching into mats. And that's one way to use this. Now on this shaft here is where you're gonna put your weight. And depending on the depth of water, um, the clarity of the water, the wind, you, may, you can change out this weight. So I just have a quarter ounce weight. I'm gonna put, thread that onto the wire and you want it so that the bullet point is pointed down. So you could use a punching weight, uh, an egg sinker, and then I take my pliers and I'm just going to, at the very end of the wire, kind of twist this around so that my weight will slide right into there. Okay, now if I find that this wire is getting hung up on a few too many weeds, I can pinch this in more that's really up to you. Again, with just the twist of a wire, I can change out this, this weight. Some people put two weights, uh, so the bullet weight is the other ones pointing the opposite way, and then they clack on each other. And so rather than a quarter ounce, I could use two eighth ounces, and that's another thing that you can do. Now, what makes this such a great rig is, well, there's several things, but first, this hook is free to move, free to swing. So if I were using a regular Texas rig worm, and especially if I had it pegged, that worm and hook is all going to move in one piece, no swivel. So this, as I work this along the bottom, the weight's going to be on the bottom of the lake or the river or wherever you're fishing, and then the weight's going to be up a few inches, or the, uh, the lure. And again, it's going to be swiveling with lots of motion, so that helps entice the fish. Uh, to strike. I can work this slowly, I can bounce it, I can straight retrieve it and just let this go along the bottom. So there's lots and lots of different things that I can do with this. So I'm going to show you how to rig it. I'm just going to rig a creature bait, okay, and we'll get into more of the things that you can rig, but I'm going to rig it as a typical Texas rig. So I'm basically just going to go in about eighth of an inch, Pop it out, bring it up around, let the hook, let the hook roll over, and then with my thumb I'm gonna measure where I want to put that hook in. And then right there, I've got a nice clean, straight bait that can work through the water again. The hook is free to swivel, and so there's my creature bait. It's got all the appendages that will that will undulate in the water. Now I can do the same thing with an, any kind of soft plastic, and really, it's up to your imagination. You can do fluke style baits, and let that pop off the bottom to look like a wounded shad. You can do a craw bait, like this rage tail. You can do a paddle tail. Yes, you can do a paddle tail and you can just straight retrieve this very slowly along the bottom. Once in a while you could give it a pop, but this weight is gonna be ticking along the bottom, hitting the rocks and boulders and stumps and keeping this off the bottom. It could be a very, very deadly tactic. You can just use a typical finesse worm. 
whether even like a little drop shot, I could downsize this hook to a smaller hook and use a finesse worm. You can use a, a bigger ribbon tail. This is a 8 inch, but you could go up to a t 10, 12 inch, like on those ledges in Kentucky Lake. Big, huge worm. You could use a typical Senko style worm. Again, it's up to your imagination. You can do anything you want. There's even people starting to experiment with hard baits, putting hard baits on here. And I haven't experimented with that yet, but that could be a new revolution as well. The other thing is that this drop right here, you can actually make your own of these Tokyo rigs. Just a few components it can be put together very easily with a split ring and a pair of split ring pliers. But I can see this, people experiment with this, so maybe going down to six, eight inches um, to get that bait up off the bottom even more. Um, so again, this is fairly revolutionary. Again, Mike Iconelli kind of brought this back from Japan about two, three years ago, and it's just starting to really hit the markets. VMC makes one, Rapala makes one, uh, but you can make this your own with buying these components. I would, depending on the cover, either tie this to straight braid or like a 15 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, this isn't going to be as finessey as a typical drop shot where you're maybe going down to six or eight pound fluorocarbon. Uh, you're going to be throwing this into some cover. And so if you're going to go fluorocarbon, I'd go 15, maybe 20 pound, or I'd go with a braid. Some people think, well, with all these components, isn't that going to scare off the fish? And I guess my answer to that is think of a, an A rig, an Alabama rig. There's lots of components on those things, and the fish just chew them up. Um, again, they're, co they're focused in on, on the plastic that's attracting. So I'm going to use this in a fish tank and show you some footage of some of these baits under the water so you can see what they look like. So I hope you learned a few tricks about Tokyo Rig and I hope you throw this into your arsenal this season. Again, this is going to be a game changer for some people. Just going to be another tool in your tackle box to help you catch more fish. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe.
and we'll talk to you next time.